Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness? Have you been considering seeing a therapist, but you're not sure where to start? BetterHelp will assess your counseling needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist so you can start getting the support you need online in under 24 hours. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. In this week's podcast, we're discussing how anxiety can cause symptoms in your body and how you can soothe them. Anxiety often comes with physical symptoms, and we often worry there's something medically wrong with us. Here are some of the symptoms we've been asked about the most with some helpful suggestions. But actually, before we dive into that, hey, Ananga, how are you? Hey, Shen. (laughs) And welcome back to another conversation. It's a delight to be with you again. Some of the symptoms that we hear about the most are dry mouth, heart palpitations, stomach upset and nausea, headaches, sweating, dizziness, and restlessness. And I realize there are more, but these are the ones that come up the most. And so we decided it would be a good idea to share with you some of the things that we know, some of the holistic ways that we've been able to help ourselves and so many others when they're feeling any number of these symptoms. We'll also talk about Ayurveda and how the symptoms can show up in our doshas, and most importantly, what you can do about all of this. Let's begin by kind of ticking off each one of these one by one. I think that might be a good place to start. Dry mouth, is fairly obvious. We we need to hydrate. We need to drink more clean filtered water, spring water if you have it, and hydrate much more. What we do know is that most people are walking around with um, some dehydration. And so when anxiety comes up and dry mouth is becomes a part of that symptom, it's often because you're already dehydrated. And sometimes we need more than regular hydration when there's dryness in the body. So drinking a herb tea like licorice tea, that has a special property that really hydrates at a deeper level. Also, there are pastels like rescue remedy pastels, which are handy to carry with you. So that helps with having a dry mouth and also addresses feelings of nervousness or anxiety. I really like those. I think they taste really good. And if you don't know what a pastel is, it's like a little candy that uh, Bach Flower Remedy makes in a little tin that you can easily carry anywhere with you. I have them in my purse and they really will stop dry mouth very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then what we often hear about as well is heart palpitations or a racing heart. And this one is the one that sends so many to the ER, so many to our group wondering what's going on, what's happening with my heart. Am I having a heart attack? Which is why we've covered that so many times. Yeah, I think heart palpitations and concerns over blood pressure are probably the two commonest at the moment in our private Facebook group. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I find most helpful if my heart starts racing is to go back to the calming point. And we covered this last week in the episode about anxiety triggers, but this is just where you take your right thumb, press it in the palm of your left hand, nice and firm, and take five or six rounds of deep breathing, five or six rounds of your breath, and you'll start to feel your racing heart calm itself. The long exhale is a wonderful breathing exercise. Any kind of breathing exercise that you like is going to help you with this feeling, with this racing heart. And we've covered so many breathing techniques over the years that you can find any number of them. And we'll make sure that we have a a link in our show notes as well. So you can choose the breathing exercise that fits you best. But you might recall that the long exhale is breathing in for a count of four, holding for a count of one or two, and then exhaling your breath for a count of seven. 
And don't worry too much if you don't get the exact times right. The what to know is that your out breath lasts twice as long as your in breath. And that will also start to settle your heart and start to make you feel a little bit more comfortable in your body. What about stomach upset and nausea? Also really common anxiety symptoms and very challenging. I used to suffer with this a lot when I was younger. When I had anxiety, I'd wake up nauseous every morning. Really horrible way to start your day. What really helps is splash some cold water on your face, take some deep breaths, sip some ginger tea. If you can, just take tiny sips. Sometimes we get really scared that we're going to actually be sick. But if you take tiny sips, it's it's not enough to trigger that feeling or increase the intensity of the nausea. And there's um, an acupressure point that really helps. And it's in the EFT tapping sequence. And it's on the stomach meridian. So if you go grab our EFT tapping points chart at anxietieslayer.com forward slash EFT, it's the point under the eye. So it's on the socket, the bone just under the eye, uh, directly in line with your pupil if you were looking straight ahead. You just tap on that point and take steady breaths and that helps calm nausea. Mm. Ginger has been such a good friend to me and my family <laughs> for so many years. I, I have fresh ginger in the refrigerator, ginger in the freezer, candied ginger in the cupboard, ginger tea in the cupboard. And it's just been such an ally through any upset, any stomach upset, any nausea. It, my daughter just a couple days ago said, wow, I'm so glad that this ginger works so quickly. I feel so much better. It really does. And, yeah. and all these natural remedies do because they're going in the right direction. You feel like it's the right thing to do, so they do work. They mm-hmm. work well and they work quickly. And ginger's amazing. I also love ginger. I love ginger tea. Um, I find it incredibly helpful and for so many things, but really for nausea, it's it's great. And then headaches are something that our listeners often share that they are experiencing, whether it be migraines or just tension headaches, whatever that may be. And having been that person as well, if something's going to come up for me, it will be a headache more often than not. And I have found that sniffing peppermint oil and drinking peppermint tea and inviting anything cooling into my body helps so beautifully. And so I always have a tiny little vial of peppermint oil in my purse. It's not because I'm waiting for this to happen. It's because I want to be prepared if it does happen. (laughs) So Anaga and I often talk about having your Anxiety Slayer care kit with you. And that's part of how you can deal with these symptoms so quickly is because you have some tried and true methods and allies to work with. And if you have them right there at your disposal, you know, oh, you know what? If that happens, I'm covered. I know what to do. I know how to care for myself. And so that's big. I will also say something very unconventional, but because it works for me, I have to share it. There are times when the peppermint doesn't work for me. And I buy one of those small containers of Coca Cola and I drink that. And again, Coca Cola has caffeine and sugar and all these things that we would normally say, don't do that. However, It's almost, I would say 95% of the time, it will knock it out. It will take care of my headache, if nothing else will. So it's not my first line of defense, but it is a line of defense. And and I've even talked to a a good friend of the family who's a nurse and said, oh, yeah, that, that they will sometimes do that in hospital if somebody doesn't want to take aspirin or doesn't want to take ibuprofen or some sort of medicine that they'll, they'll give them a hope. So there's that. Do with it what you will. If you have a big issue with caffeine, then probably you don't want to go there, but it has worked for me. 
it's good to know what works for us individually because all headaches aren't created equal and different people experience headaches in different ways. Um, I've suffered a lot with headaches in the past. And I think what you've just described with, with the peppermint oil is a response to a pitta headache, which I've definitely also experienced in the past. And I think I've also experienced more vata headaches. According to Ayurvedic medicine, we have these different mind-body types and we respond in different ways. So really important for headaches of a more vata type to make sure you're going to the bathroom regularly or that can cause headaches. Something that I found really helpful is to soak my feet in uh, fairly hot water, you know, warm to hot water with lavender oil and magnesium. And I find that really relaxing for my head. It seems to kind of open up the blood vessels lower down in my body and it feels like the pain drains away. Sometimes I'll take a shower as well and put the hot water on the back of my neck and run it down my back and that feels like it eases headaches. Or we can massage along our eyebrows, just gentle pinching movements along our eyebrows from the inside out. Massaging the ears also can help and massaging around the back of the neck. And also and also massaging your feet with oil mm-hmm. to pull the energy away from your head yeah. down to your feet. I have some great pitta oil that I just bought from this lovely woman on Instagram. And I, I wish I could tell you, I think it's pure Shivari, but I'm not 100% positive. I'll make sure that I add that to the notes. Anyway, beautiful, handmade, handcrafted, small batch oil for uh, all the doshas. But of course, I bought pitta and uh and rub that in my on my feet my feet love it anyway so whether i have a headache or not a good thing to do yeah and that's also important is to have preventative self-care as well so that you know we're keeping symptoms at bay by tending to ourselves kindly how about dizziness because i know that that's something that comes up that can cause quite a scare because you know oh heavens why am i why am I dizzy? What What's happening here? Yeah, dizziness is um, something I've also suffered with, with anxiety in the past, and it's another really awful symptom. They're all very challenging in their own way, but uh, dizziness is it's kind of overwhelming because you don't feel so balanced, you don't feel grounded. It really affects you. Different things that help are trying to be grounded, uh, maybe take a warm bath with some magnesium, try some restorative yoga. Uh, legs up the wall, child's pose, just laying on the floor in corpse pose, shavasana. And tapping points that help with dizziness is the underarm point. Again, you can find that on our tapping diagram. So for that point, you pat quite firmly about four inches under the armpit, and you pat one side and then the other. You take nice, steady breaths, making your exhalation longer than your inhale just to help you feel Grounded. That point's really good if you feel lightheaded or you feel like you might pass out. And if you can, get outside, sit on the ground, lean on a tree, or take a gentle walk. I've noticed that the few times that that comes up for me, and as I get older, I notice that it's coming up a, a little bit more. And if I just pay attention and stop, if I just stop whatever it is I think I need to be doing or, you know, and, and be mindful of, okay, this is happening. How can I best care for myself? What do I know I need to do right now? And depending on where you are, it could be easier or more challenging, but if you're at home, yeah, if you can get outside and ground, that's what I would recommend to be like the first thing you do. Sometimes you just need to sit down. And have a have a glass of water, have a cup of tea, just sit, and it'll work itself out quite quickly. But also be mindful of nutrition. Make sure you're eating. Make sure you're not skipping meals. And ideally that your meals are warm, nourishing. The Ayurvedic recommendation is that they're warm, wet, and slightly oily. For example, you might have a bowl of oatmeal and don't make it dry. Make it a little more liquid in there. Uh, add some cinnamon for steadying out the blood sugar and bringing a little warmth. And you could just add a little flaxseed oil or another oil of choice. Or for savoury dishes, 
vegetable stews or soups or rice bowls with vegetables and with some olive oil drizzled on the top. And you can bring ginger into the cooking, also helps with lightheadedness as well. Mm. And then one of my very favorite symptoms, restlessness. And I realize that that is just my mind having her way with me and uh, wanting me to do a million different things at one time, but not really having the capacity to do any of them, if that makes sense. <laughs> so when I'm feeling restless, that generally means that I need to move my body. and just get up and move. And as often as Ananka and I both are sitting at our desks at, in front of our computers, doing our podcast or voice work, whatever, and as so many of you are on your devices and screens and sitting, there might be days that go by that you don't move your body very much at all. And you might start feeling restless and you might start feeling anxious about that restlessness that comes up in you. And just the act of moving makes a big difference. Sometimes anxiety has quite a pushing, restless energy to it. In Ayurveda, it's called chanchala. There's moving, restless energy. And it can be very difficult to placate because we find it hard to sit still. We, we find it hard to focus. So gently moving is a good place to start. And if we can move mindfully so that we're harnessing the mind with the movement, then that helps. Love that. Yes. Like a walking meditation. Yeah. Where we're paying attention to everything as we're, and I think about my village and I'm walking through the village and I'm so blessed to be able to walk by this beautiful pasture where there's a couple of horses and there's a wonderful fountain and there's usually ducks in this pond and there's a stream and there's trees, you know, just looking at letting all of that come in and fill up my senses will do wonders with calming that restless feeling. And the more we do it, the more it will settle. And sometimes I go out if I'm feeling a bit stirred up and I'll really go to a tree and study it, feel the bark feel the leaves. If there's some flowers around, I like to smell them. I take a lot of photographs in nature because it helps me really be present and really notice. I like to take real close-ups of details and flowers and colours. It helps me draw my mind really into looking and being where I am. And that was something I started doing after um, a trauma, by a big shock in my life a few years ago. I found taking photos really helped me uh, study and appreciate where I was, but I like to get very tactile as well, not just be behind behind a screen. Yeah, it's so helpful. I do, as you know, I do the same, and have a thousands and thousands of pictures of nature and what a gorgeous way to care for yourself by being in it and noticing the details and noticing the miracle of all of it that's just these beautiful trees and plants and how how they just naturally do their thing and cycle through and show up <laughs> and they're just sitting there waiting for us to notice them right like hey here we are <laughs> waiting for us to go hang out with them and yeah very grounding to just sit with your back against a tree and take some deep breaths as part of qigong Meditation and many other cultures recommend that we get our shoes off, get our feet on the ground, and it helps with dizziness, restlessness. It helps with headaches. If I can get my feet in a stream on occasion when I've had a headache, it's really helped me. And it helps with anxiety. And of course, all these symptoms we're discussing here are anxiety symptoms. So the more we can take care of ourselves and work to reduce the underlying anxiety, the less these symptoms are going to be present in our life. As we talked about each symptom, we also brought in Ayurveda here and there for a better understanding of how to support yourself and your constitution. And I thought it would be helpful to also share how these symptoms show up in our doshas. 
So for me, being very pitta, I will have more issues with headache, indigestion, acidity, or heartburn. Mm -hmm. With vata folks, they'll often have feelings of nausea, stomach ache, bloating, constipation, feeling very much ungrounded and restless, or maybe lightheaded and dizzy. Vata seems to, to receive more symptoms than pitta and kapha. At least that's something that I've noticed. And also kapha is where fatigue kicks in and overwhelm and just feeling lethargic. Almost, I, I think about when kapha symptoms show up as like a sign of depression, feeling depressed, lost of interest in activities and doing anything and just really wanting to be left alone. Yeah, kapha does tend to manifest more of a low mood. All doshas can, but kapha shows it quite readily there with the lethargy and the loss of interest. And, and vata does show more symptoms. And according to Ayurveda, vata is the, the queen of the doshas, the master dosha. So vata's always there, very active within us, and always increasingly uh, aggravated by stress or anxiety. It's, it's the first dosha to respond to stress and anxiety. And it's the energy that comes up within us when we experience stress and anxiety. So whatever our constitution, we can all experience elevated vata. And wherever there's anxiety, there's vata there as well, being disturbed. Thank you. I always learn so much more from you about Ayurveda. I'm <laughs> grateful to be a student of Ayurveda. And having been so for a number of years now, thanks to you, all my life is so much better. The nutritional choices, the supplement choices, the teas I drink, the, the knowing of how to address so many different symptoms in natural, beautiful Ayurvedic ways is just pure magic. Yeah, because to be a student of Ayurveda is to be a student of life and a student of ourselves, our individual nature. So we know when we have these symptoms come up, we've got ideas of what's likely to be pushing the symptoms and what gentle, supportive steps can we take to help ourselves get back in balance. It's very empowering. Mm -hmm. It really is. Before we go to break, let's talk about how anxiety affects our response to the symptoms that we've shared here today. When anxiety is elevated, we tend to resist responding to symptoms. We really get freaked out. We just don't want to know. We're not able to respond. We react. We become fearful and we fixate on worst case out outcomes. We always go to what if, what if it's this, what if something terrible is wrong with me? That's where the anxious mind always goes in response to symptoms. And that's just no fun. It's awful. It is awful. And that's, that's why there's such a strong desire to numb ourselves out or to hide, or we get in that place of pretty much doing anything or being open to anything that will make it stop. And I think what's really important to share is that all of this is very normal. So this is going to happen, but you can get to the other side of it. You have an understanding that, oh yeah, my mind is going to tell me to resist. Yeah doing anything. My mind is going to tell me that I need to just run to the hospital or curl up in a ball and freak out or whatever the thing, you know, whatever you do. Yeah. Get out of my head, numb yeah. out, whatever it is. And, uh, and, and this is a totally natural and usual reaction to anxiety. And it's a horrible loop because it increases the symptoms themselves because we're increasing our own anxiety. So we really need help stepping out of that loop. We do. And when we come back from the break, we'll talk about what helps. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness and preventing you from living your best life? There have been a few times in my life where I've needed some extra support, 
and wish I'd had an option for online support. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. To be clear, BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and their service is available for clients worldwide. You get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to leave your home. It's more affordable than traditional in-person counseling, and financial aid is available. You can start living a happier life today. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. Before the break, we were talking about how anxiety affects our response to different symptoms and the, the way that anxiety makes us get in that loop of just being stuck about doing anything, just becoming fearful, having the strong desire to numb out or to hide all of the things that happen. And we want you to know, again, we'll stress again that this is very normal, but there are things that you can do to help. And I want to start by sharing a little bit of a, an entree to what you're going to hear next week with an interview that I have with Dr. Dane here from Access Consciousness. One of the very first things that he invites us to do when we have something come up in our bodies is to ask, who does this belong to? And that might sound so strange to you right now, but what he shares and, and what I've been studying now for about two years is that we often, those of us who suffer with anxiety, are often healers. We often have these really big hearts and these healing tendencies, and we want to heal and, and take care of, we're nurturers, we're all of these wonderful, beautiful things to other people. And often, we can pick up on other people's symptoms, on other people's anxiety, on other people's stuff, and we don't even know it. And the number is somewhere between 50 and 100%. So think about how big that number is. So here's an example to make a little bit more sense. Have you ever been in a position where you're just coming home from work or coming home from school and before you even step in the door, you know something's going on inside with your partner or your child or, or whomever you might live with if you, if you do live with someone. Like you can just absolutely tell that something's going on with their energy. Or maybe it's that thing where you're just thinking about somebody or worried about somebody and you feel like you absolutely need to call them. This is kind of what I'm talking about. And so if you ask yourself, who does this belong to? And you start to feel a little bit lighter, just a little bit more space, a little bit lighter, it might not be yours. And so he does this thing where he says, okay, maybe this isn't mine. Return to sender with consciousness attached. Like I just, I, like I return this. And anything that, that causes this to come up in my body, I return it. And sometimes that works within minutes. And I know it sounds kind of strange, but I've been at this a while, you guys, and it, and it does work. And I know that I carry, especially my loved ones, I carry their stuff sometimes. And we don't have to. And once you start to become aware of it, it's kind of like the conversations Ananga and I've had for years about the thoughts in your head and how the mind wants us to think that it's in control. And so we ask, who does that belong to? Very much like, Who's saying that? Or where does that come from? Or where is that coming in my brain to make me think this thought, whatever it might be, this judgment, this critical voice, similar to that? I would start there. And then if that seems just a little too weird or a little too woo-woo, then let it go. It's, it's not for you, but it is something for you to consider. There are also a number of other choices that you can make to help you when these symptoms come up. And the first one will not be a big shock to you, even though I talked about drinking Coke earlier. <laughs> it's to replace caffeine with calming teas like chamomile, lemon balm, passion flower. Those teas 
are so beneficial. And just yesterday, I put some in the window. It was really a warm, sunny day, and and I wanted to just make some some tea brewed by the sun. And it was phenomenal. I, I do that often in the summertime. And you're doing such a service to your body because you're giving it this wonderful hydration along with the healing and calming benefits of these beautiful flowers, these beautiful plants. Yeah, it's really medicinal hydration. I regard teas so favorably in my home. I have a whole cupboard full of teas. Actually, it's overflowing at the moment. Mine is too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's like my medicine chest. It's the first place I go if I have a headache or if I'm nauseous, unsettled, a little antsy, um, congested, whatever it is. Just go to the tea cupboard. And more often than not, that will be enough. You know, I might need to repeat the same tea shortly afterwards, but it's often enough just to turn right. turn to the right tea. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to have a selection in your cupboard that you can go to to calm an upset stomach, calm when we're feeling anxious, if we're having trouble sleeping, whatever it is. It's a very simple, gentle place to start and very effective. And there's some wonderful teas for settling uh, an anxious stomach. We like pucka relax. Pucka teas are fantastic if you haven't tried them yet. We like peppermint tea. This time of year, I have so much peppermint in my garden that I can make tea anytime I want or just, you know, pick it and smash it between my fingers and, and breathe it in. Licorice tea, ginger tea. These are all teas that can help your stomach. Sometimes if I get heartburn, if I drink peppermint tea, it's just so helpful and cooling. And again, you feel so empowered because you know, and even if you just have one or two items for symptom that you know, oh, this this can help. I'm going to give this a try. Yeah, and our bodies like it because we're giving the gift from nature's intelligence to respond naturally. To take peppermint and licorice together, there's a puck of teas blend, peppermint and licorice. Those two together, if you're feeling that you have uh, acid indigestion, too much heat in the stomach, very soothing. Well, I have to get that one. That's not one that I've bought yet. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And the next thing that helps is breathing practices. And I already covered this earlier in the episode, but revisit the long exhale, revisit pranayama breathing, the calm point. All of these guided breathing practices are available on our Patreon. So if you are not a patron of Anxiety Slayer, you're going to want to check that out because there is, we've got to be over a hundred downloads now. Yes. Yeah, there is. (laughs) So check it out. And what is the URL for that? I always want to mix it up, Ananga. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Anxiety Slayer. Oh, well, that's easy enough. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, magnesium. Magnesium is so incredibly helpful. And if you haven't listened to my recent interview with Dr. Carolyn Dean, please do give yourself that gift of listening. And she is so amazing. She's a pioneer in magnesium studies. She's written the magnesium miracle. And she also has a wonderful product called Remag that I've been using for a very long time that really gets magnesium into your body without it causing any stomach symptoms or because sometimes magnesium can make your stomach a little bit upset or make you feel like you need to use the bathroom quite a bit. And, And the Remag takes care of that. And it's just so very helpful to your body in so many ways, not just anxiety. There's just an incredible number of, of, uh, body functions that magnesium is a part of and that a deficient body will have more symptoms like the ones we've shared today. So once you start onboarding magnesium, you're going to see a lot of good changes in both the anxiety that comes up for you and the symptoms that come up in your body. You'll actually see less of, of all of it if you have the right amount of magnesium in your system. We do have a link in the show notes 
to a page all about Dr. Dean and Remag and the two interviews I've done with her. We also have an affiliate link to the Remag and Reset offerings that she shares if you'd like to check it out. And we have a list of the, with the links of the interviews and her list of symptoms that she gives that come from magnesium deficiency. So there's a magnesium page now at Anxiety Slayer. So it's anxietyslayer.com forward slash magnesium. And you can get all the information there. Let's finish today by talking about how you can switch from self-aversion to self-compassion. For me personally, this was a huge turning point in my recovery from anxiety, coping with anxiety, and on occasion coexisting with anxiety because it can very much be a part of our life. When our body shows unwelcome symptoms, we often feel an aversion to ourselves. We kind of disconnect from ourselves. We don't want to deal with it, but it's here. It's happening within us. So we're trying to numb out. We're trying to run away. We're trying to get distance, but it's always there waiting for us. And every symptom can just feel like a re-triggering event. But when we can turn to ourselves with self-compassion, with kindness, and just ask, what can I do to help myself support this symptom? I understand that it's likely to be a symptom of anxiety and not what my mind is spinning out trying to give me this, these stories of fear. These are more than likely symptoms of anxiety. How can I turn to myself with kindness? How can I respond to myself with compassion? And one of the simplest ways to do it is to just sit and pause and put your hands over your chest, just cross your hands over your chest and take deep breaths and just be with yourself and understand that it feels awful. It feels frightening. How can I help myself? Rather than run away to scrolling, to the news, to a movie, to whatever else we're going to, we go to, we all have our areas that we run to, to try and divert. And it's quite a remarkable experience. It can feel uncomfortable for the first few seconds, but then the anxiety starts to abate and we get an idea of how can I help myself? Mm. And that is such a powerful place to be. There's so much potency there when we can step into that space of self-care. Can't, we can't emphasize it enough. And with that being said, as much as we've shared today, I have to say this out loud. We are required to. The suggestion shared in this podcast is not intended to replace a one-on-one relationship with a healthcare professional or qualified counselor. We're providing this for your reflection and consideration. If you recognize or regularly experience the physical symptoms of anxiety, consider seeking the help of an anxiety coach or a therapist or healthcare practitioner right away. Addressing your anxiety and treating it, as well as learning coping skills, can help prevent the anxiety from causing you more suffering. Thank you so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We're so glad that you come back week after week. And I hope you'll join me next week for a a new conversation with Dr. Dane here from Access Consciousness about his new book, Body Whispering, and how anxiety shows up in our body and what we can do to clear it.